Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Hope that everyone had a very good night's rest and that uh, it's a beautiful day today. So, today's topic will be on emotions, managing your emotions, uh, do you want to get well, keep walking, receive forgiveness, admit the truth to yourself, and faith, face the truth, okay? And today, my I'm reading from the NIV Bible, okay, and... My meditation for today was judging others, okay? Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way that you judge, you will be judged. And the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. So, I had to realize, I started... I wanted to do another message, but this message is all it's all about God's grace, G R A C E, and we have to learn not to be judgmental of other people because you never know what it is that another person has been through or is going through or you understand, you don't know what another person's situation may be, so don't judge other people, and I'm just trying to get this thing correct, okay, okay, so basically, my topic today is now, like, I realize that in our walk, in our faith, in just basic everyday existence, I realized that God was asking me to show meekness, strength under control, not weakness, submission to domination. The world will tell us that if we humble ourselves, if we apologize for our wrongs and do the things that is necessary for peace that we're being weak and letting others walk all over us but that's not true you understand god says that it is not weakness whenever god looks for someone to use or to do his will he always looks for a person that is meek in character and only a meek person will consistently be obedient to his word. The Bible tells us that Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth when God called him to do the job that he had set aside for him. God has a plan for each and every single person. And we all we have to do today is to do what Moses did back then, and that is just to obey, but be doers of the word, obey the message and not merely listeners, betraying yourselves with deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. I remember I was at a uh, a woman's convention and it was like they had like a seminar and this woman was speaking that she had a lot of wounds that she had left, that had left her insecure and, fa and fearful. She desperately wanted to be free, but nothing seemed to work for her at that time. And when I think and I look back at, uh, when I think and I look back, at what was actually happening, she says that, you know, I sat with a group of ladies who all had a lot of the same problems in the past, just like I did. They also had emotional problems, but step by step, God had been delivering them. As I listened to them, I heard them say, God led me to do this, 
and I did it. Then he led me to do another thing, and I did it. And I realized as I sat there listening to them that God had told me the same thing, but <laughs> the difference between them and me was is that I didn't do what God was telling me to do. So I wasn't obedient to receive from God what he has promised us in his word. We must obey his word and we must receive the word, but then we must become doers of the word and not just hearers only. We need to go to Bible study or if if you go to a Bible study or a, a study group or a life group within your church, synagogue or mosque, you understand that we also need to go out into the world and put the word of God into practice in our daily lives, okay? There will be times when doing what the word says is not easy and times when we don't feel like doing what it tells us to do. But obeying the word requires us consistently to be diligent, okay? I can't, it, you know, it can't be a hit or miss kind of thing. We can't just do it for a while and see if it works. There must be a dedication and commitment to the word, okay? That is to the word of God because God says he put his word above his name. And if he's given us the name above every name and he, then he puts his word above his name, that means that he is placing priority on the word. And I've been dealing with this issue for a long time. And believe me when I say that those who do the things God's way gets the victory. You may say, well, Jennifer, but I've been doing the word for such a long time and I still don't have the victory. Then I would say to you is do the word some more, okay? Nobody knows exactly how long it's going to take for the word to begin to work in your life. I was um, connecting with someone on Twitter and she kept saying, oh my God, I keep reading the Bible. And she made a post and I just happened to see the post and then I made a comment. She says to me, well, she's been saved and she's a new Christian and she's been reading the Bible, but she doesn't understand what she's reading. And I just said to her, just like my comment was, ask God to open the word to you and to give you understanding and revelation. And then... I told her, just keep reading it, keep reading it, keep reading it, because what eventually happens is that, good morning, Calvin. Okay, now if I hit this and do invite, are you going to go like overlapping? Okay. Now, basically, what ends up happening is that even when you don't understand it at the time, just keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. And eventually, believe it or not, that word would get down into your spirit. And when you need it, you can recall it at that time. Now, God word works and there's no other way <laughs> that I know of. So I can't speak on something else that I don't know anything about, but I know the word and I, and, and I don't even know it that well. I think uh, because I am constantly reading and listening to it, I feel confident enough to just sit here and to teach it. Am I an expert? Am I a theologian? Did I go to a theological school? No, but I am an ordained minister. I am an officiant. I'm, an, I'm a life coach, and I don't tell people that all the time, but I sat down and I'm saying to myself, if I'm teaching, like I've been sitting under the word long enough and I've been applying it to my life long enough, well, I guess that qualifies me to <laughs> to teach it. So sometimes we try 
what the what the enemy tries to do is to keep you out of the word and once you don't get the word into you he tries everything in his power to keep you from putting the word into practice into your life i also know that once you start putting the word into practice that what he does is he does everything to make you think that it won't work but the truth is is that that's why you must keep at it ask god to help you by giving you the desire to get into his word and to do it no matter what no matter how hard it may seem or how long that it takes to produce fruit and results don't give up don't quit. Now, do you want to get well? There was a certain man there who had suffered with a deep-seated and lingering disorder for 38 years. When Jesus noticed him lying there helpless, knowing that he had already been a long time in this particular condition, he says to him, do you want to get well? Are you really in earnest about getting well? Isn't this an amazing, amazing question for Jesus to ask the man that this poor man had been sick for 38 years. And I remember when God finally started my healing process and delivering process. I was literally 38. My life literally fell, to, fell apart. I ended up getting divorced. I ended up getting delivered. I ended up being put back together. And that was when my journey started. And I remember when... God asked, my sister asked me that question. She says, Jennifer, what do you really want to do? And when I told her that I want, I wanted to go to school, I wanted to just learn and become better. Once I said that, and I heard myself say it because that was what was in my heart. When I tell you that God moved heaven and earth to make sure that everything that I needed was put into place, my family was my biggest supporters. My brothers opened their homes to me. I ended up staying with one relative. And then first I stayed with my brother Rodney. Then I stayed with my, with my aunt. Then I stayed with my sister. Even though I had to walk to school for an hour going to school and an hour coming like from back and forth from school and then i had to learn that i had to commit to the process commit to my own well-being and i remember when he was dating this girl and we really loved her but the one thing that i realized is that even though it was an interracial relationship sometimes the things that we want for ourselves our family may not be uh may not want the same things for us and then we have to make that choice what is it that you want what is it that you want do you really want this relationship do you really want to get well now do you know that there are people who really don't want to get well? There really is. There are people just want to talk about their problems. There are people that those type of people, they do you really want to get well or do you just want to talk about your problems, okay? Now, sometimes people get addicted to having a problem and it becomes their identity and their life. It defines everything that they think and say and do and all of their being is centered around that problem if you have a deep-seated or lingering disorder god wants you to know that it does not have to be the central focal point of your entire existence he wants you to trust him and cooperate with him as he leads you to victory over that particular problem one step at a time don't try to use your problem as a means to getting attention or sympathy or pity or pity when i used to complain like <laughs> and i remember i used to complain and my sister would say to me well jennifer i'm not gonna feel sorry for you 
I'm not, I'm not trying to hear you at this moment. Like, and, and then I would protest because I just wanted, like, I just wanted to talk about the problem. And then she would say to me, you know what? I'm not going to do this. And I'm not going to listen to this. She's like, find something else to talk about. And I would be sitting there and I would be mad. But the, she, she told me the truth. And the truth is it used to make me so mad that I could have just like, mm. we get angry at those who tell us the truth. And the truth is, is that before we can get well, we must really want to be well in our bodies, in our souls, and in our spirit. We must want it enough that we are willing to hear and accept the truth. And God works differently with different individuals, and each of us must learn to follow God's personal plan. Whenever our, whenever our problem, or whatever the problem may be, God has promised to meet me and to meet my need as to repay us for, for for the loss. God's promises to give us beauty for ashes. And I remember that facing the truth is the key to unlocking the prison doors that may have held us in bondage or in, not just physically, but emotionally, psychologically, and physically and the justice of God instead of you the former instead of you God giving you former shame you shall have a twofold recompense instead of dishonor and reproach your people you shall rejoice in your put in your uh P-O-R-T-I-O-N. God has provided a certain portion for you. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Like when you're cutting up or serving dinner, you get your portions on a plate, okay? God has that portion set aside for you. Everlasting joy shall be yours. Now, the word recompense means repayment. So when the prophet says that the Lord will recompense us for our own shame, dishonor, and reproach, he means that God will make it up to us for all of the hurts that we have experienced in life. The Bible says that, beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave that way open for God's wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will repay, requit, says God. Okay, so many things have happened, not only to me, but to so many people. And I'm here to tell you, like, Vengeance belongs to God, and one of the greatest mistakes that we make is trying to avenge ourselves to get even, to bring the scales of justice into balance, rather than trusting God to do that for us. If we try to do it ourselves, we only wind up making a huge mess. So when the Bible tells us about recompense or justice, it simply means that you and I will get what is right for us when what is coming to us. Now, as blood-bought Christians and blood-bought children of God, we know that as long as we trust in God and are obedient to Him and that we're repentant in our hearts for our sins and failures, we will not get what's coming to us in the form of punishment or sin, but we do get rewards for our righteousness, and that is God's righteousness, and because Jesus took our punishment, so we get his inheritance. The Bible says in Psalms 37, 1 and 2, fret not yourself because of evildoers, neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness, that which is not up right in our right standing with God, but they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb, okay? There are so many things like that's going on right now within this country that is injustice, like like for for the black community for for the for the gay community for the lgbt community for women for for minorities and we 
can see it. We are experiencing it, but God is in the midst of it all, okay? And God will raise up the correct people and put them in the proper places within the government, within the school system, within the the legal system to do what? So that we as his children and, uh, of humanity will be able to live a better life because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit and we don't want anyone to be cut down and withered even those who have harmed us in our own life and I thank God that I have come to a place of not wanting to see my tormentors have a miserable life that's why you really have to learn to be led by the Spirit and and to walk in the spirit because vengeance belongs to God and God will make everything right. R-I-G-H-T. But what God has promised us also is that we belong to him. And as we follow him, it is, is that those who have hurt us will one day pay for their own transgressions against us unless they come to that place of repentance. But God will make it up to us if we trust him to do so. Too often believers don't seem to realize that they are not to take matters into their own hands. Many of them are angry at what have been done to them and that anger manifests itself in many destructive ways. So now this is on a personal level. Part of the problem is that as we our Christians have not yet learned that into each life some rain must fall. Psalms 34 19 says many evil confront the consistently righteous even those we are the children of God not everything will go just the way that we want them to and not everyone will treat us the way that we would like them to treat us you understand but the Bible teaches us that if we continue to trust God no matter what happens to us if we keep our eyes on him H-I-M, and have faith and confidence in him, he will balance out the scales that the second half of the psalm says, but the Lord delivers him out of all of his troubles. The time will come when everything that when everything will be set straight and set right and our enemies will be repaid for all of their treachery and we will be paid back double for all that we have lost and suffered. So true justice is worth waiting for and a great recompense, a very great recompense. After all these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, fear not Abraham, I am thy shield, your abundant compensation and your reward shall be exceedingly great. That is in Genesis 15 chapter 1. In this passage, we see that God came to Abraham and promised him that if he would be faithful and obedient to him, he himself would be the great recompense and reward. Later in Galatians 3, we are told that the blessing of Abraham was not just for him alone, but for all of us who are the children of Abraham through faith in God and through Jesus. As Christians, we are engrafted into the body of into the body of Christ and each of us can be as blessed as Abraham if we will be as faithful and obedient as he was. You can look at the lives of many, many people. We can look at our celebrities. We can't judge them because only God knows what they had to go through to become famous and they put in a lot of work, but they were faithful to their calling, whatever that calling is, to their career, to, to their vocation, to uh, their ministry, even our preachers and those that are in any profession, you understand? And God is so good to us that many Many, th many times things are so wonderful that you ever have like a season in life where 
things is just going really, really well and everything is just, God gives us that season of peace. There, you have to remember that you are in covenant and you're in covenant with God, the same covenant that God made with Abraham. You are in the the covenant with God because God has made that covenant with you as well. And the same thing is that God told Abraham that if he would just obey him, he would bless those who blessed him, B-L-E-S-S-E-D, bless those who bless him and curse those who curse him. You cannot curse people that God has blessed, you understand? And you cannot, when people curse you, don't curse them back. Just bless them anyway. If you'll stop being angry at all these things and at the things that happen to you and quit trying to get revenge on all those who have either harmed you or have uh, done wrong to you, justice belongs to God and God will, ba and God, G-O-D, God will balance it all out and make it all right, okay? Good morning, Malika. For years, I went around bemoaning my past and all the unfair things that had been done to me in in my lifetime. For many years, I kept asking God, why me, God? Why me? Why me? Why me? I was driving myself crazy and with what? With self-pity, okay? And I stayed on that pity pot for the longest time. Now, the thing is, it's okay to feel sorry for yourself. It's okay to feel pain and it's okay to feel bad, but we can't stay there. You understand? Finally, God spoke to me and says, Jennifer, you can be pitiful or you can be powerful. Which one do you want to be? And I decided that I didn't want to be powerful. I mean, I decided that I didn't want to be pitiful. I didn't want to be pitiful. I didn't want to be running around feeling sorry for myself. I would rather just be powerful and walk in my authority and be powerful in a humble way. Finally, God spoke to me and says, all of us manifest what has happened to us in our life and our past experiences are the cause of much of our negative attitude and behavior. I would rather walk in God's power and in his authority, but while I may, it may be the reason for me that I don't want to stay pitiful, you understand? And I don't want to be a stepping stone where people are a doormat. But God is telling each of us today, if you will trust me enough to turn over your past life to me and let me handle it, I will make it up to you. So quit trying to do it yourself. You're only making things worse, okay? And I had to learn that I would rather have God's power and authority than to be pitiful and uh, weak. <laughs> Does that make sense? One important part of leaving things in the hands of God involves forgiveness, which we will all, you know, which I'll discuss later. But we all need to remember that forgiveness is freedom. A man once told me that I operate a counseling center and the number one problem with people is that we counsel, that they counsel is unforgiveness. And I noticed that. I remember when I was a chaplain, Yes, I'm a chaplain and I would go to like the nursing homes or to the hospital and I would like either uh, minister to the people and I would sit down and I'd be talking to them and I, would, and I would realize that they were either bitter or in unforgiveness. From my own life experiences, I know that this is true, although that I've heard many messages on the subject 
of forgiveness, we still have to learn to deal with it. Otherwise, the scales of justice in our lives will never be balanced and we will never experience the full abundant life that God wants to bestow on each and every single one of us. If you will learn to trust God with all of your past mistakes, and your past life, he has promised to repay those who has caused you misery. Although God's way of repaying is often different from the way that we would imagine it, and we and to repay us twofold, okay? A twofold recompense is for the misery that we have suffered. He'll give us beauty for ashes. He'll restore our fortunes. You understand our finances. Isn't it worth giving up all of our past hurts for that? <laughs> for that kind of reward. I have to deal with so many things from within my own family, the good parts of my family, the bad parts of my family, but they're still mine and I still love them. And I had to realize that forgiveness within myself, forgiveness of that I, I had to even forgive myself that I was divorced. I had to forgive myself that you know, that some of the mistakes that I made, some of the things I brought on myself, and some of the things I had to take responsibility for, I couldn't blame everything on everybody else. I had to take responsibility for my own actions. So I had to enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and spacious is the the road or broad is the road is the way that leads to destruction and many are those who are entering through it but the gate is narrow const contracted by pressure and the way is straightened and compressed that leads away to life and few are those who find it and i have seen what god has said to me, I would rather do things God's way. Here in this passage, he speaks of two different ways, the broad way that leads to destruction and the narrow way that leads to life. As I was meditating on this passage, God quickened it to me by saying, Jennifer, on the broad way, there is room for all kinds of fleshy things and carnal things like bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, jealousy, vindictiveness. But on the narrow way, Way, there's only room for the spirit and the spirit is to walk in love okay now when you're walking in love there's no room for bitterness unforgiveness resentment or jealousy in the flesh it is easy to take the broad path but in the end result is destruction it is much harder to take the narrow path that leads to life and that is walking in the spirit of gratitude and love and unforgiveness now our emotions will move us to take the easy way to do what feels good for the moment. Wisdom moves us to take the hard way that leads to life. And that question is, which will you choose? Now, God wants to be good to you. God wants to be good to me. And therefore, the God earnestly waits expectantly, looking and longing to be gracious to you and to me. And therefore, he lifts himself up that he may have mercy on you and me and show, show us loving kindness. You understand? That is what God wants to do. Now, when I think that it is good. It is, oh, it's hot. I didn't turn the air conditioner on, but hmm, I'm sweating away the pounds. <laughs> I know I'm silly, right? Okay. Anyway, for God is a God of justice. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are all those who earnestly wait for him, who expect and look for him and long for him, for his victory, his favor, his love, his peace, his joy, his matchless, unbroken companionship. Okay, you can read that in Isaiah 30, chapter 30, verse 18. And I love the um, Amplified Bible because it expands it and it expounds it in a way that is actually palatable and very 
receptive. So notice again that God is a God of justice and he waits and expects and looks and longs to do the right thing for you and for me. He wants to be good to us. You understand? So Hebrews 6 tells us, for God is not unrighteous to forget or to overlook your labor of love which you have shown for his name's sake that is why all of us who earnestly wait for god is blessed okay god is in heaven waiting to be good to you and to me and he is a god of mercy and justice not anger and punishment and he wants to balance out the scales in our lives to make it up to us for all our hurts and our pains and wounds that we have suffered throughout our lifetime. So no matter what they may be, whatever your present situation or your past experience, God wants to be good to you. God wants to be good to me. So God has a good plan for you and for your life. So keep on walking. And and when I say keep on walking, it means as your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, okay? No matter what has happened to you in your entire lifetime, even if you have been abandoned by your spouse, abused by your parents, hurt by your children, or other people, if you will just stay on the narrow path and leave all of your excess baggage behind you, sooner or later you will find peace, joy, and fulfillment that you seek, okay? So Jesus is the way, and he has shown us that the way in which we are to walk, the Lord has sent his word and he sent the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us in a way that we are supposed to go and the narrow way that leads to life and not the broad way that leads to destruction. We must keep walking on the ways of God and in the ways of God. And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint and acting nobly or doing the right thing for in due time at the appointed season we will reap if we do not loosen or relax or or faint in our courage okay sometimes good morning damaris sometimes it's hard doing the right thing but keep doing the right thing anyway regardless of what keep reading the word keep listening to the word and keep talking to god spend time with god because the bible does not promise that when we do right that we will reap the reward immediately but it does assure us that if we keep doing the right thing eventually eventually that we will reap a reward and god God says, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest time. And that you can read in Genesis 8.22. To paraphrase that, we might read it this way. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed, there will be time, and there will be harvest. We must be patient like the farmer who plants the seed and expectantly waits for the harvest. He looks forward to and talks about the harvest. So that means if you have a crop, and you put if you want good morning Barbara if you plant seeds eventually if you nurture it and God is always hovering over his word that's the Holy Spirit to perform it okay so if you will continue to walk in the way of God that prescribe for you if God prescribes a particular way for you to walk and that is to be faithful, to be good, to be kind, to be loving, K-I-N-D, to be kind, to be loving, to be patient, to be 
respectful, you understand, that everything that you have suffered throughout your lifetime, God will reward you for it. So keep walking the narrow path that leads to life, and that is to walk in the spirit of love. Life in all its fullness and abundance is a promise from God. So when we're dealing with uh, damaged emotions, you will find that you have to first be Become aware of the steps to take when God leads you in that path he, through the healing gate from the damaged emotions that I had suffered for years and of years of abuse in, in growing up as a child, in my marriage, in my personal relationships. I believe that God wants to heal me and heal them as well. You understand? And I believe that if we will just keep doing the right thing, that God will eventually give us the victory over our emotional problems and give us the spirit of restoration for a broken spirit. If we face the truth, we have to face the truth. We can't run from ourselves. We can't run from life. We can't run from our situations. If you abide in my word, hold fast to my teachings and live in accordance with them that you are truly my disciple okay and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free if you are to receive emotional healing one of the first things that you must learn to do is face the truth you cannot be set free while living in denial you cannot pretend either and certain negative things that will did happen to you or certain negative things that that you did to people or certain negative things that have been influenced upon you okay by other people you we react to them and we respond to them but the thing is many times people have suffered abuse or some other tragedy in their lives and they try to act as though it never happened for example let's suppose a young girl has had an abortion or bears a child out of wedlock or then gives up the baby for adoption you understand that traumatic experience and cause her to be emotionally damaged and wounded later in life because she develops an opinion and attitudes about herself that is based on what she did. Now, in the same way, a person who has suffered through verbal, physical, and sexual abuse can develop a bad self-image and under that misguided concept that he or she has been mistreated, there must have been something wrong with him or her to bring it upon themselves or that he or she must have de deserved. Boys get molested at a young age by the men or women in their family. Women get molested at a young age by the men or women in their family. Young people are preyed upon by adults. You understand? People in authority, people who have, that is supposed to look out for them and take care of them. And from my own experience and many years, I have learned that I have come to realize that we as human beings are marvelous and we adapt to building walls and cramming things into dark corners, pretending that they never happen. During my 18 years of life, when I was at home, so many, it was such an abusive environment that I had to face the fact that what had hap what was happening to me while it was actually taking place that I had to remove myself emotionally from it being happening. But then I moved out, grew up, went on my own, and I acted as though nothing was wrong with me. And I actually lived like two separate lives at the same time. I never told anyone what was going on in my private life. But why don't we want to bring Bring these things to light and bring them into the open. We're afraid of what people will think. We're afraid of being rejected. We're being or being misunderstood.
misunderstood or losing the love of those who care for us or care about us or have different opinions of us if they really knew all about us. And I remember when I was married, I had wanted to speak to my ex-husband about some of the things that I had been through. And for some reason, he wasn't available emotionally to listen or to deal with it. So I couldn't tell him because he didn't want to hear it. And he was dealing with his own stuff. And it's wonderful to have Jesus as your friend because we don't have to hide anything from God because he already knows everything about us anyway. We can always come to him and know that we will be loved and accepted by him no matter what we have suffered or how we have been treated or reacted to what it was that happened to us. We must remember that God knows everything and the Bible says that even he knows the words that are in our mouth and yet he knows what we're going to say and do before we say it. One time in the early days of my walk with God, before I learned that I couldn't hide anything from God, while I was praying, I began to ponder whether I should tell him something that was on my heart. As I was debating within myself, God spoke to me and says, Jennifer, I already know all about it, okay? Well then, why do I have to tell you if you already know about it? The thing is... Is, is that do you know why we have to tell these things to God sometimes we can't tell it to people but we can always tell it to God because God already knows whatever you may face whatever has happened to you face the truth then acknowledge it to God in prayer. Ask the Holy Spirit to heal you and he'll begin to lead you and guide you into a healing process. Confess your faults. Confess one to another. Therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, Pray one for another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. Okay? The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man or woman makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its, in its working. I think that there's a place for eventually sharing with someone or with someone else that which has occurred in life. Now, there is something about verbalizing it to another person that does wonders for us, but we have to use wisdom. Be led by the Spirit. Choose someone you know. Choose someone that you can trust. Be sure that by sharing your burden with that person or with that someone else that you don't have to place it upon that individual's shoulder. You understand? If you're giving or sharing your experiences with someone, it is not their responsibility to fix it, to make it right. You understand? Also, don't go on digging, don't go on a digging expedition trying to dig up old injuries long buried and forgotten. For example, if you was abused by your grandfather 40 years ago and now your grandmother is 85 years old or 85 years of age, don't decide to go and tell your grandma what your grandfather did back then. You understand what would that, that wouldn't be wise and that wouldn't be wisdom. It might just help you to release it, but it will burden, you will put the burden on her. So it is important to use wisdom and balance balance in these matters. If you're going to share your problems with someone, let God show you who to choose as a confidant, okay? Pick a mature believer, someone who is not going to be burdened down or harmed by what you share or use it to hurt you or use it to make you feel worse about yourself. Many times there is a release that comes when you finally tell someone else those things that have been crammed into the background of our lives for years, okay? Especially when we discover that the person with whom we share them still loves us and accepts us in spite of those 
those things. So when I finally worked up the courage to share with someone what had happened to me in my early life, I actually shook violently. Every time I tried to talk about it, I felt just like I had the was living it all over again and I was experiencing it again it is an emotional reaction to the things that have that we have kept buried for so long that I was shaken with fear now when I talk about my past it's as though I'm talking about somebody else's problems instead of my own problems because I have been healed and restored my past doesn't bother me anymore and I know that I am now a new person and a new creature in Christ Jesus. Many times people will come to me and share things that has happened 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. Often they will weep and sob as the horrible truth comes out. You understand, I believe that many of them get total release when they realize that they can talk about those hurtful things and still be accepted without being judged. And I tell them that God loves you and God accepts you and I love you and I accept you. So whatever happened to you in the past is not going to make any difference to me you're we are still friends and I love you unconditionally and I had to learn to admit that truth to myself and to other people that's why when I started that um in, in when I opened up the uh this teaching is you can't judge other people no matter what age they are or what race they are what nationality they are what gender they are what sexual orientation they may be you don't know what a person has been through in their life you understand and if God sends someone to you for healing you understand you can't judge them you just have to take it listen to it receive it be the sounding board and then release it unto God and when people come to me for help in this area I often tell them go and look at yourself in the mirror and confess the problem to yourself because when I didn't have anyone to tell these things to, I would look in the mirror and I would tell it to myself and then I can hear myself say it and release it. Perhaps the problem is that your parents did not love you as a child. How could I ever verbalize that or say that to somebody else that I could be asking, you know, you may be asking that question. You can do it with the help of the Holy Spirit that is within you. And I believe that in order to go forward, we have to face the facts, okay? My parents loved me, but they loved me in a way that was, it, it, it was so different. It was such a different environment at that time. And I think because the environment was so abusive and toxic that they didn't get a chance to focus on us because they were always in turmoil with each other. And I had to learn to forgive them for that as well. And I had to learn to face the facts that it's true that sometimes our parents didn't love us or sometime we face that reality once and for all you have children today that is being abandoned and left with other people that are taking advantage of them and you think oh my god does my parents if did my parents even love me why would they leave me with this particular person or that particular person knowing that i'm going through all of this kind of stuff sometimes people have had abortions rape uh there there's incest there's uh physical abuse drug addiction whatever the environment, emotional abuse. If you can't tell anybody, look in the mirror, talk to yourself and talk to God. Okay. Now the Psalm 27 10 says, confess to yourself. Although my father and mother have forsaken me, yet the, yet the Lord God will take me up and adopt me as his 
own personal child, whatever the problem may be that is bothering you, face it. Consider confessing it to a trusted confidant, then admit it to yourself in your innermost being, okay? There was, I heard a story about a doctor who intermittently in his life would leave his medical practice and become a bum on the street. When someone, after many years, finally got to the root of the problem, it was discovered that he had spent his entire life seeking work, words of approval and acceptance from his father, who had always rejected him. He had worked hard to become a doctor, thinking that would earn his approval and and the approval and acceptance that he was seeking. When he didn't, he worked even harder to build up a very successful practice, thinking surely then his father would be proud of him, that he would go and see his father sharing his achievements and accomplishments, only to experience more rejection. Now, when we try hard and fail, often we experience time of physical, mental, and emotional burnout, like what happened to Elijah <laughs> in First Kings. It was at such times that the doctor would go off into a deep and emotional depression and turn from his successful practice to the life of a homeless beggar. He has faith. He as he faced the truth about his father, that his father had a problem and was unable to show love, the doctor was restored to mental and emotional wholeness, okay? Now, many of us have mama issues and daddy issues, and we have to learn to receive forgiveness and forget the sins, okay? I will forgive their iniquity and I will seriously remember their sins no more. In Jeremiah thirty-one thirty-four, no matter what your problem is or how bad you may feel about yourself as a result of it, God loves you and in Jesus' name, he has given you a new L-I-F-E, okay? So, we have been given a new life, a new family, and new friends, and new love, and we have to accept and appreciate, and these people are there to support you and to help you, so you're okay, and you're going to be okay, you're going to make mistakes, but it's okay because the one who lives inside of me and inside of you cares for you and cares for me, so you may have to look at yourself in the mirror and confess. I had an abortion, okay? I did that, God, and it is a marvel to me that I realize that I can stand here and look at myself in the, look at yourself and be honest to yourself. If you had an affair, like confess it, admit it, you understand? And then learn to forgive yourself. You understand? We all have to learn to forgive ourselves of the things that we have done that was not always the right thing to do at the time. You can't even judge somebody because you don't know what their financial situation is. You don't know what they, what type of life they was living at the time. So you have to learn to walk in forgiveness. Forgiveness of of what you've done, what you're, you, you understand for the things that is being done to you. You even have to learn to forgive the people that did it to you. You understand? So once we've learned to confess our sins, ask God for forgiveness. If we continue to drag them up every time we go to God for prayer, we are reminding him of something that he has promised to forget. If God has promised to forget your iniquities and the things that you have done, whether those mistakes or anything, you understand we all make mistakes growing up young. You understand we don't always make the right choice, but we have to learn to forgive ourselves of the mistakes that we have made. Once you confess Confess your sins to God and ask God to forgive you of these sins. He 
and not only will forgive you, but he'll also forget them. You understand? So you need to do the same thing. Stop punishing yourself for something that no longer exists. Acknowledging yourself as a new person and new creature in Christ. Therefore, if any person in, that is engrafted into the body of Christ as the Messiah is a new creature, a new creature means that the old things have passed away. Your previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now you're a new person. You don't think the same way. You don't do things the same way. You have a new spirit. So in the past, many times, I wasn't proud of myself. For example, when I was a child, you know, <laughs> I used to like try to like, you know, you can't, I used, I remember my father, I used to take money from my father. And then one time I took $5 from my dad and let, I wanted to go on a, a trip to Hershey park. And I took the $5 from out of my dad's wallet and put a note and I owe you $5. <laughs> I didn't even have a damn job. I was only in the fourth grade, right? And my father came to school and, you know, he was like, Jennifer, did you take $5 from out my wallet and, and gave me and hand me this note this, that I owe you? And I says, yes. He says, let me tell you something. He took me in the coat room, gave me the spanking of my life. He says, let me tell you something. You don't take anything from anybody without asking them for it. Why? Because he didn't want me to grow up to be a thief. You understand? So I had to thank him for it. And I had to learn to do without a lot of things for a long time, for many years. Why? Because I didn't want to grow up to be a, um, I, a, a thief. I remember there was like uh, Macquarie's in Orange. I, me and my mom would go to like uh, to, to Macquarie's in Orange and then I would be like a shoplifter as a little kid. I would steal like a little lipstick or eyebrow pencil or something like that. And my mother would look at me and she'd be like, Jennifer, what you doing? And I remember one time I got caught and they caught me in the, um, the security guard had caught me. <laughs> my mom was so embarrassed. And then when I got home, I got the beating of a lifetime. And I remember... And from then on, I, I stopped stealing, you understand? Because I didn't want to go to, I didn't want to go to jail. <laughs> and my mom and my dad said, if you keep stealing, that's where you're going to end up. And believe it or not, I had to learn to confess these things. And then I had to learn to forgive myself. This is terrible because I don't steal now, so I don't make myself miserable about it. I used to as a kid, but I had to believe that I stole those things because I was either being abused and stealing made me feel as if I was in control of something in my life instead of always being controlled by everything and everybody else. So there was a time in my life when I was a barmaid and I used to work at Club LaSalle. Oh my God, Club LaSalle. Now I'm serving new wine and that is the word of God. And so I don't worry about what I used to do in the past anymore. Okay, I used to, it, I used to see tremendous testimony to be able to admit that what we were, but to testify that the fact that the old person, the things that I used to do, the old man or the old person has died, and now we are made brand new in Jesus. We are a new person in Christ, okay? So the Bible tells us that the old man has died and was buried and is now resurrected to new life so that you and I are now seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When you and I should be, why should you and I be ashamed to admit something that happened like 
20 years ago, 30 years ago in your old life, it is no problem for me to talk about a dead person. If they're dead, they're dead. So if you are now new creatures in Christ Jesus, all things have passed away. We need to forget them. You understand? And don't beat yourself up. Uh, understand? Learn to let things go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I love that cartoon Frozen and I love that song from Frozen. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. No matter what has happened to you in the past, no matter what you've done, no matter what has been done to you, you should feel free to look at anybody and say, this was what I was. This was what I did. But thank Thank God, now I am a new creature and a new person, and there is now no condemnation, you understand? And there is now no condemnation, and I mention it in my book, My Journey to Healing, is based on, for now, there is now no condemnation. You cannot be condemning yourself for the things that happened to you in your old life, you understand? That is is not you anymore. You're not that person anymore. So you would not believe that God can give you a new life. Trust me, God has made me new. All things is become new. And we have to learn to forgive, forget, acknowledge, and move on. Okay? Now, Bringing these things out into the open causes them to lose power and grip on you. You understand? It doesn't have, it can't hold you. It can't, it doesn't have any power on you anymore because you've released it, okay? Now, these things... Many, 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 many times we think of these things happening to us and we can't forgive. You have to forgive. You have to forgive. You have to forgive. Because if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, God is faithful and just and true to his own nature and promises. And he will forgive us of our sins, demiss our lawlessness, and continually cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity of his will in purpose, thought, and action, okay? If we claim that we have sinned, we contradict his word and make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us and the divine message of the gospel is not ours in our heart we understand some people are trapped in denial afraid of what might happen to others that that some, some people are trapped in denial and they might be afraid of others finding out the truth about them, but as long as they deny the past, they are never going to be set free from it. Nobody can be set free from the problem until he is willing to admit that he has a problem, okay? An alcoholic or drug addict or anyone who has lost control or a sex addict or a, a, a rapist or 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 a pedo a person with pedophilia you understand these people have lost control of their life and is doomed to suffer until they are able to say that I've got a problem and I need help with that particular thing maybe somebody has problem lying or stealing or um or, or 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 just men you have men that like to beat women up and stuff like that like have an anger issue you understand unless they admit that they have a problem you understand they'll never be healed or delivered from that situation and people you have people that are womanizers and 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 you understand people have to admit that they have a whatever so you can't blame other people for your situation people have to learn to take responsibility for themselves and for their actions and they have to be they have to want to get help they have to want to face it and take responsibility and i've learned a lot that you have to let things go, okay? If you really, really want to change, 
turn to God, ask God, say, God, I'm having issues in this area or I'm having issues in that area and I need you to help me. And if you do that, God will help you. So you have to remember that follow the spirit of truth. You understand? But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. And not just half truth, but the full truth, the, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me, God. Yes, as we have seen, God can heal anybody. And God is willing and able. But we must want to receive the healing, receive the help, receive it by facing the truth and acknowledging the situation in which you find yourself, okay? We must stop trying to blame someone else for everything that is wrong with us, trying to blame the way we are now on what happened to us in our previous life. If we ever want to be healthy, you understand? And I say healthy emotionally, physically, psychologically, you understand? I used to have a hard time getting along with people. And I was so sure that it was because of the way I had been treated as a younger person. But once I began to ask God to heal me, he began to reveal to me the truth about myself and my own personal situation. So if you can't turn to nobody, Turn to God. You can always talk to God because God is always there for you, okay? One of the things that I that God revealed to me was that every time that the Holy Spirit tried to guide me into an unpleasant truth about myself, my immediate reaction would always be to say, yes, but, yes, Lord, but. And God started dealing with me with that butt part. Why? God showed me that an excuse just covers up the root of the problem so that it is never exposed and the person is never able to be set free. Whenever someone corrects you, do you do what I used to do and that is make an excuse? Or do you face the truth and admit the fact that Whatever it was that you're doing or is doing is wrong. Admitting we are wrong is one of the hardest things that a person can ever do in their life, but it is a necessity. You understand? You have to be able to admit that you're wrong sometimes, and I immediately have to start to ask God to help me. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me in that area. Whatever area it is, many times when God tries to tell us something that we're doing wrong, we find it hard to simply say, Lord, you're absolutely right. You understand? I have no excuse. I ask you to forgive me me and help me to overcome this situation, whatever that situation is. And I believe that that kind of honesty in a relationship with God and other people stops the devil and it stops the enemy from running rampant in your life. And I don't think that Satan knows what to do with that kind of truth. Why? Because he can't, he doesn't have power over you anymore. You understand? The truth puts an end to the lies and to the devil's reign. Now, inner healing versus emotional healing, I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter, the Holy Spirit, the helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, the standby that he may remain with you forever. The spirit of truth whom God will... Whom whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take it to heart because it does not see him or know and recognize him, but you know and recognize him for he lives with you constantly and he will be within you. You understand God is constantly with us. God is constantly with us and sometimes God will send someone to you, not to abuse you, but to restore you. You understand? So if God brings people into our life, not only 
to 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 point the finger but to restore you back to wholeness and in john 16 13 jesus tells us that here is this message he gives us the spirit of truth that he has been sent within each and every single one of us if you are born again child or person of god you have the holy spirit dwelling and residing within inside each and every single person and we have to take that time to meditate to pray to talk to yourself to encourage yourself you understand and his primary function according to jesus is to guide us into all truth a teaching within the church which i feel i need to caution you you understand although many believers will disagree with my viewpoint it's called inner healing inner healing inner healing means going within deep within one's self okay and you can always ask somebody to pray for you but the best way to do it is to talk to yourself talk to the god that is within you because the god that is within you will lead you to the truth and give you the correct answers okay and inner healing is a method used in healing hurts of the past and it is often quite effective, but we must realize that even ungodly methods sometimes work. And a friend of mine was involved in transcendental, transcendental, transcendental meditation when she was saved. And she went to her pastor and asked him about it. And he says, no problem. There's no problem with an add-in. If it works, it works. A lot of people can use many. There are so many forms of healing, 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 healing. If you're seeking peace within, you understand? Don't just look and say, oh, that's worldly or even uh or that satanic find your mantra yoga is good if it helps you to get centered you understand if it can help you to focus and it is helping you god is not against it okay so you have to learn that we all have there's so many ways and so many roads to getting better to become centered to become healed from the inside to find inner peace and if that works for you i'm not here to condemn you or to judge you or to say that is the wrong thing no 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 you understand if that works for you and it is working for you and if it's helping you more power to you as long as you find peace within yourself you you understand and you have to learn to say that okay this works for me there are so many forms of meditation you understand and meditating is just being still and finding peace within oneself okay and on that note i thank you all for listening we'll pick it up tomorrow where we will be dealing with healing or deception okay so always remember that there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, okay? And that it is okay to be okay, okay? You are okay just the way that you are. Don't let anybody ever tell you anything different, okay? You have to understand that today we'll be dealing with who? Mrs. Gail Thackeray. And we have to understand that when you are dealing with your emotions, that you have to take responsibility. You have to take responsibility for yourself. You have to take responsibility for your own actions. And you have to be present. Be present. <laughs> be a part of your own healing process. Okay, now don't forget your journaling book. Okay, and that is a form of healing. 
get paper, get pen, and start to journal, 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 journal. And Gail Thackeray is dealing with the 30 days of prosperity, so we'll be dealing with that as well. Now, from my notes that I have acquired, from Mrs. Gail Thackeray, we are dealing with did we do spending and the budget? I am my word, okay? I am my word is what we're dealing with today. And, oh my God, I love the Bible. <laughs> I love the Bible. I love my notes. And I love teaching. And I love healing. Okay? So let's get into the zone, everybody. Get into the zone. Get into the zone. Get into the zone. I think I'll be doing a teaching from who? Hmm. Okay. No, I won't be teaching that then. Ready? Let's do this. Get into the zone, get into the zone. The Shekinah glory is present. The Shekinah glory is present. The Shekinah glory is present, okay? Now, re don't forget to get my book, Journey to Healing, okay? Journey to Healing. Uh, you can pick it up on my website, uh, www.jennifergraycoach.com resources, okay? And it's in a Kindle format. Okay, and you can just download it onto your cell phone, onto your tablet, or your laptop, or computer. Okay, and go through the different uh, chapters and phrases, and join me in the life group for Journey to Healing. And let's get into the zone, get into the zone, get it. Why, do, why am I calling it a life group? Well, the Facebook group. Okay, Journey to Healing. Okay, and... Remember that God is omnipotent, God is omnipresent, and God is always present, okay? Now, palms up, feet planted, and remember I am my word. Get into your power stance or your power sitting. <laughs> your power sitting sit, or sit in your power position, okay? Seated or standing, whatever, but remember that God, he is always with you, okay? So, and God is within, God is within, God is within, God is within. So, we're drawing from the power that is within, and I am my word. I am my word. So, remember the Shekinah glory, the white light. The white light that is covering, 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 covering you. That is covering you. And within that white light is the protection. It's the anointing. It's the Holy Spirit. And only good things can come into your space. Only good things can come to you for your highest goodness. For your highest goodness. <laughs> I couldn't even say that word. Okay, ready? Hands open, palms up into your lap, and get into the zone. Be still. And I am my word. What I speak to myself is especially, what I speak to myself and especially out loud will manifest in my life, okay? The divine source will deliver to me whatever I ask for, focus upon, and speak, okay? Therefore, I will only speak of abundance and joy, and I will not talk of not having enough, or L-A-C-K, nor will I worry, nor dwell on financial problems or issues. Whenever I attempt 
Whenever I am tempted to speak of not having enough or L-A-C-K, I will replace these negative thoughts quickly with positive thoughts of the abundance and that is mine by divine right. Okay, I remember that through my subconscious, I am connected by the divine source and therefore connected to all of the abundance that I D-E-S-I-R-E. I will make a conscious effort to speak of abundance every day in every way. Okay, now receive it, believe it in Jesus' name. And take a moment to reflect and meditate on what I just says, asking what it means to you. Write down any thoughts or insights that you may have in your journal. Okay, and on that note, have a wonderful day. Ooh, I think I just sweated another pound. I submit myself to each and every single one of you, okay? And I thank you all for joining me. Thank you for joining me today. And thank you for being here with me. Thank you for being present. Thank you for listening. Love each and every single one of you. Salam alaikum, my friend. Love you. Love you, Gail. Love you, Barbara. Uh... Love you, Malika. Love you, Calvin. And to all those that are listening, and I can't see everybody's name. Love my family. Love my friends. Love my mentors. Love my mastermind team. Love my neighbors. Love my uh, friends. <laughs> Okay, love my city, love my state, love my country, love humanity, and I've learned to love you, Jennifer. Have a wonderful day, everybody.